Okay, welcome to episode two, where we're going to talk a little bit more about macro lenses, and more importantly, show you the results of the lenses we spoke about last time, uh, the results of what an extension tube or extension tubes combined can give you, the results of a telephoto with a built-in macro mode, the results of a standard 1855 lens that is a common lens that comes with a camera, and the result of a dedicated macro lens such as the MPE65 there. Now, to get you the results and give you a really good idea, I'm actually gonna do it on this Canon 7D. I'm gonna put it in the video mode and I'm gonna just film that 20 pence piece handheld, so it might be a bit shaky, uh, but I'm gonna film it handheld through this camera so you can see the footage of what each one gives you. So let's start off with um, just the 18 to 55 lens in its closest focusing distance. So I'm putting that onto the camera. I'm gonna put it into manual focus, put it to 55, and I'm gonna rotate the lens to its closest focusing distance, okay? I'm gonna pick up this 20p piece, and let's just pop that into video mode. And I'm just gonna hit the record button. And just getting that there. Now that is as close, if I bring it any closer, you see it goes out of focus. So there is the closest focusing distance that we can get. So that's pretty good, that's not bad. I mean, you could get a good shot of a flower, a close up or, or, or something interesting like that, but you couldn't really get in really, really, really tight. So let's do the next test. Let's try this telephoto lens. Now this works a little bit differently because the distance that you'll be away from your subject matter is increased, which can be an advantage if you're trying to photograph insects or wildlife because then you can shoot from further away. So on the macro mode on this one, we have to get it into the macro zone on this lens, which is the 180 mil to 300 mil setting. Again, I'm gonna put it into manual focus. I'm gonna put it to 300 mil to get the maximum power. And then I'm gonna turn it to its closest focusing distance. So I'm ignoring, I'm ignoring the autofocus modes here completely. I'm just simply putting it to its closest focus distance, which is gonna be its maximum magnification. So let's pop that into um, video mode. Now you can see straight away that I can't even get that in focus because it's too close. Because as I mentioned, with this particular lens, it's gotta be somewhat further away from the subject matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lean, lean that coin against that lens cap thing there. I'm gonna move the camera further away, just angle my ball head in position. It's really difficult to even see what's going on at the moment. Okay, and that's coming into focus now. There we go. So I'm not adjusting the focus here, I'm just adjusting the camera position. So I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. There we go, till it just comes into focus. So a pretty good macro result there from the built-in macro setting of this lens. And that's probably about twice as powerful as we were getting out of that 18 to 55 lens. So you could do some pretty good stuff with the built-in macro function on that lens. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. What should we do here? Let's run with the 18 to 55 again. But this time I'm gonna put the single, uh, the smallest thickness extension tube on its own on that lens. Attach that on there. Let's move that back in. Just gonna do this handheld again with the 20 pence coin. Let's pop that into video mode again. Do a little bit of recording and I'm gonna bring this in as close as I can. Let me just, oh no, just gonna put that to closest focusing. Yeah, make sure that's all as it was. Bring that in, hang on a second. And there we go, you can see there We've got more powerful than we just had from that lens, and that's just with one single extension tube on. One extension tube is giving us that setting there. So let's uh, go a little bit further, detach the lens. I'm gonna put all three extension tubes on together. Let's just go all out and see what this can actually give us by combining all three extension tubes. So there's the three extension tubes on. Pop the lens back on the front. 
put it to its closest focusing distance at the 55 end and put that into video mode. Now you will lose a little bit of light with the more extension tubes, the light falls off, so you might need to adjust your exposure to suit. That's easy for me to do in this mode because I can see the image in the live display. Now, wow, look at that. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Picture's a bit darker, so I'm gonna have to lighten up the exposure. Now, I think I've got the aperture now already at maximum. So my only way to lighten the exposure here would be to increase the ISO. So I'm gonna just up the ISO a little bit to make that a bit brighter. But look at that, now we can see the, the word 20 is filling the whole screen. So we've got three extension tubes. That's a set that costs probably around $120, 90 pounds, somewhere around there. Because you can get the independent extension tubes. You don't have to go for the brand name ones. The independent ones are available much cheaper. And interestingly, because they've got no glass in, you don't really need to worry about optical quality. As long as they lock and fit and they connect to your lens okay, they should do the job fine. So here we are, we've got the 20 piece coin, 20 pence coin, and the word 20 on the coin is filling the whole screen there. That's a really impressive result. So that's a really economical way of transforming your standard lens or the lens that comes with your camera or most normal standard focal length lenses like a 50 mil or an 80 mil or a 100 mil into a fantastic macro lens by combining it with some, uh, a set of extension tubes. Okay, so let's have a look at the last one, which is my dedicated macro lens. This, as I said, is the Canon MPE uh, 65 millimeter macro lens. Now, if this doesn't win, I'll be a bit disappointed because this is obviously a specialist macro lens, should be better than all of them. It will be better optically uh, because it's designed for this exact purpose. So I'm just gonna go all out, let's put this right up to full power five times magnification, pop it into video mode, and let me just get that coin and see if we can see it in there. Now, the image is quite dark because we're at five times magnification, so I'm gonna to have to open the aperture, and I can open the ap aperture significantly on this lens because it's a larger aperture than um, the previous lens. This is a 2.8. The standard lens that we were just using before was a 5.6. Um, so this one's going to let more light in anyway. Um, it's so powerful, I can't even see the coin. There we go. We just come, Now, wow, that is incredible. Now, that is unbelievable. I can, this is so powerful, I'm having trouble finding the, num, the, the word 20 on the edge of that coin. It's around about there somewhere. There it is. Look at that. I've got the three letters TWE from the word 20. TWE is filling the entire screen. Massive magnification. I mean, I'm trying to hold that really still and it's shaking around because of the, the, the huge magnification. You see all the scratches and all the little dents on the coin. That is absolutely stunning. And optically, this will give you fantastic results. So I'm pleased to say that because I do quite a bit of macro work and shoot them commercially, my investment in a dedicated macro lens was worth it. But the good thing is you can still get fantastic results with a set of extension tubes. So keep that in mind and um, you get out there, find yourself some good subject material and uh, see what you can come up with. Oh, I almost forgot. I haven't done a test with a compact camera. We'll just finish this section off. I'll do a little bit of footage through the compact camera and you can use that as a comparison too.